Next, I want to talk about how you can interact with directories. I'll talk about the concept of the current directory, how you create and delete them, and how you can actually read them to list the contents. Now, as you probably know, every process has a current directory. You are in a directory at a particular time and relative path names specified in system calls are interpreted relative to this current directory. At the system call level, get CWD will tell you what your current directory is. The first parameter points to a buffer where the results will be returned, the path name of the current directory. The second parameter is the size of this buffer. Uh, you're responsible for allocating this buffer, by the way. How big should it be? Well, there is a symbolic constant called path max that specifies the maximum size of a path name. Uh, this would be a good size for the buffer. Get CWD also returns a pointer to the buffer so that you can embed this call in, for example, uh, a call to printf to print out your current working directory. A process can change its current directory. That's done using chudder and the path name of the new current directory. How do you create directories? Well, that's done with mukdir specifying the name of the directory and its mode. This is very similar to the create system call. But notice that this will only create one directory. For example, if I try to do mukdir of a slash b slash c, uh, this will actually fail unless the directories a and b already exist. This is equivalent to the default behavior of the command line tool, mcdir. Directories can be removed with rmdir, although it only works if the directory is empty. Again, this is equivalent to the behavior of the command line tool, rmdir. Now, directories are files. They have their own inode. They're marked in that inode as being directories, but you cannot open them and read them with the traditional open and read system calls. Instead, you need to open a directory with open dir. You get back a handle on the directory, which we call d here, and then you pass that to a call to read dir. Each call to read dir will return information about one file. And typically, you loop around this call until you've reached the end of the directory. What does read dir return? It returns a durent structure. Now, different versions of Unix and Linux have different contents for this structure, but here are the key fields for this structure. We have the inode number, the file type, and most importantly, perhaps, the name of the file. So by looping around these calls on readerdir, we can list the contents of a directory. When we're done, when readerdir tells us that we've reached the end of the directory, we close it with closedir. Now, to illustrate this idea of directory traversal, we're going to look at a simple program called dirtotal, that adds up and prints the total size of all the files in a directory. We have a few declarations here. Uh, D is the pointer to DIR. This is the type that we get back from the open dir. This is kind of analogous to the type you would get back from an F open if you opened a file. This is a pointer to a dirent structure. This is the structure that returns a single directory entry. We're going to do a stat on each of these files to get its size. So we need a buffer to return the stat results in. And then total is going to accumulate the total of all the file sizes. So we begin by opening the current directory dot. We're keeping things 
as simple as we can here. Now we go into one of these classic loops doing a perform, assign and test, reading the directory entries one by one, storing them in info and continuing to loop until reader tells us that we've reached the end by returning a null pointer. Each time round we get one file entry. We're doing a stat on that file, passing in its name from the, uh, the direct structure. And the results will be returned in the stat structure called SB. Now I've made things deliberately easy here by operating on the current directory. We do not need to start uh, concatenating the directory name with the file name in order to build the name that we're going to pass to stat. We're, we're just operating on the current directory. The stat structure contains the size of the file and we're adding these sizes into the running total here. Once we fall out of the loop we close the directory and we print out the total size of all the files. We can give this a try. We build it. And then we can run it. And there we go. The total size of all the files in the current directory. I'd like to show you a slightly larger example. This one also does a directory traversal. Uh, but it's basically a combination of that with the list file program that we looked at before. It's called list dir. I'm going to break with tradition and show you the output of the program first. So we'll run it on the directory corresponding to this module. And here's the output. You will see it looks somewhat like the output from ls-l, although it's by no means identical. So you see the first character position shows us the file type. Then we've got the nine permission bits, uh, the file size, um, the timestamp of the last modification, and then the name. Now this one uh, I've picked more or less by accident there. Uh, this is uh, the dot dot link that points up to the parent directory. Now, you, as you're probably aware, the rule in the Unix and Linux world is that files whose names begin with a dot are considered to be hidden. And you may know that you need to use the ls-a option normally to see them. Well, this program knows nothing about the concept of hidden files. It's just pulling out the entries in the directory and showing them all to us. You'll see also that the order is essentially random. It's certainly not alphabetical. This is just the order in which the entries were found in the directory. Well, let's have a look at the code. Change into the right directory. Get the file name right. Now what I've done here is I've taken what is essentially the same code that we had in the list file program and I've parceled it up as a function here which takes a file name as an argument. But it's basically the same code. What I've done, the uh, array of file name types, I've abbreviated them down to a single letter. These are the letters that would appear in the very first character position of the output. As before, we stat the file, test for errors. This is that tricksy line of code we saw before where we're using the mode value to index into this array of one character strings to print out the, the file type indicator. And here's our call to printf to print out the nine permission bits. Here we print out the size from the stat structure and then we convert the modification time to a string, a printable string with C time. Uh, there's a little bit of fiddling about here because the string that C time returns has a new line on the end and we need to get rid of it. So that's what's going on there. Then we print it out, followed by the name of the file. 
So this function generates one line of output describing just one file. As we scroll down, we have uh, basically just a, a straightforward directory traversal loop as we saw before. This time we are taking the directory name off the command line. So we're making sure that the user remember to type one in. Uh, we cd or chd rather into that directory there. And then that's quite important because that means we can just open the current directory then. Obviously, that's the directory we've just done the chadur into. Then we have the uh, classic directory traversal loop here. Uh, and each time around the loop, uh, we pass the file name in to the list file function that we just looked at.